it'll reach the chair. Pro, right? Place yeah. Pro? Um, so a uh, change of plans for better performance. Uh, Mr. David Conrad, a uh, local star of stage and screen. This is a story called The Yankee by Clayton Crow. The Yankee at the sitting up. The Yankee comes in the back, brushing by my casket with his creased wool, smelling like he just swum in his cologne. He fishes his way through the mourners who stand around, fanning away the July heat, and he takes up a spot nonchalant-like along the black wall, opposite where my body is laid out. Next to him, our big mantel mirror faces the wall as do the other mirrors in the house. Everybody here knows that catching sight of a coffin in a mirror bodes nothing but ill for the look of it. The Yankee draws a narrow-eyed glances from our friends and acquaintances. At a southern man sitting up, he couldn't pass without notice, particularly by the dead man. Outer, my wife, moves quick to close the door to the kitchen before Clovis, her favorite calico, and my enemy in life can get into the main room. Cats are Satan's minions. Given half a chance, they'll jump in a casket and steal the soul of the recently departed. I imagine old Clovis sitting on the other side of the door full of sneak, waiting for a chance at payback for all the swift kicks I've given him with my brogans when Arden's, Arda's back was turned. Outer. Out as jaw is set, her mouth pulled sour, serious, and straight as a plumb line across her face. She's holding in her misery. I feel for her. After the hullabaloo of my sitting up and then the funeral, she'll be all by herself, dutiful, Alda. She was pretty in her day. First time I ever saw her on my way to pull corn on Johnson's farm, I've been moved to whistling appreciation. Her red hair danced like a brush fire above her mama's wash as she hung it on the line to dry. She scowled at first, but then she winked at me, her eyes sharp and shiny like a needle in a haystack, her grin sharp just like one too. There is no blessing greater than the love of a southern woman. Ain't no man worthy of it, neither. You've got to be regularly thankful, but in the end you always fall short of living up. I'll be the first to hold up my hand here. Folks, move out. Peek into my casket, then depart to the left where the kitchen table has been drug out into the living room. On it sits a slew of casseroles, biscuits, some slaw, ham, potato mash, red-eye gravy, sweet potato pie sets in amongst it all. There's a swap nearby when a out his friend sits at the head of the casket, fly flap at the ready. Her lips are all sucked in on account of a dingy false teeth soaking in glass under her folding chair. I look down at myself for the first time. The casket is draped in yellow veils to keep away the summer flies. A fat black one, a housefly, hangs by its entrails from the veil above my ripening form. I don't appear nothing like how I remember. It's like someone pulled a plug out of me and I deflated down to my bones. Two heavy buffalo nickels sit atop my closed eyes. I gotta admit, I never reckoned sitting ups was much good for anything. I figured the spirit would, uh, taken off by this point. The truth be told, I'm a bit fidgety standing around here waiting for something, I don't know what, to happen. Well, thinking of death puts me in mind of the Yankee again, so I glance about for him. He's still in the back, now standing next to my empty rocking chair, an idle hand tipping it back and forth. Folks are shied away from him. Rocking an empty rocking chair is some serious bad luck. It's like spinning a chair on one leg or opening your pocket knife and letting someone else close it, you know. All of a sudden, a racket busts out from over near the buffet, and who do I see but Delma Mena? She's half on the floor, legs buckled <coughs> under her, face a beat, and temples flaring with veins, just a wailing. Wilbur, she hollers. Oh, Wilbur, why? Why? And Delma is my sister-in-law, wife to my recently deceased brother Percy. Fine woman with long legs that you could have worked like oars, but <laughs> old Percy never truly appreciated her. Delma didn't make half this much a fuss at Percy sitting up. <laughs> Amongst the mourners, whispers break out like air leaks. And quick as a shot, Outer is behind her, her strong arms hooked underneath Delma's. She roughly puts Delma on her feet, who promptly starts in on another wail. And the woman with the suara smacks her lips and voices, Well, what everyone's thinking, Lord, she's just the sister-in-law. <laughs> and before I know what's what, the Yankee is there. Behind Outer, my wife, to help. And then I notice his pale hand slide its way all too familiarly to the small of my wife's back. She arches into it, just for a second. 
making a curve I ain't seen in many years. The plumb line snaps and a smile whips across her lips. Out his eyes shine like the needles I once knew and pierce everything I trusted. The Yankee lifts blubber and Delman kicks the kitchen door open to carry out the back. And at that moment, Clovis the cat sees his chance and bolts. The cat leaps, pulling down the veils over my body and lands in my casket. He knocks the coins off my eyes and they fly open. And from those assembled come gasps and much uncomfortable shuffling. Oh, outer. I can see it all now. That's that one. Thank <laughs> you.